Welcome to two Stuart Sirius steam engines. This one is part 8, removing the temporary exhaust manifold and making an improved version. Shimming the crankshaft and showing how to lubricate the cylinders when the engine is connected to the airline. And finally, running the engine on the bench using compressed air. This part has to go, including the original fittings, it's far too big and ugly. I only fitted this brass elbow to the existing fitting, just so the exhaust wasn't pointing directly at me. It's never a good idea to breathe in a mixture of oil and compressed air. With the elbow gone, it's looking better already. But from a model point of view, this fitting is also far too big. If this engine was going to be fitted in a hydroplane, then it would be fine, because it's a very large bore exhaust. And you may or may not know that it's very important to get rid of the steam once it's done its work. And that is one of the reasons that Great Western steam engines performed much better than some other ones. Back pressure is not desirable in most gas engines, especially a steam engine. Even with the T-piece fitted, this did restrict the exhaust flow. I'm going to remake the exhaust outlet using a check valve. It has a 3 8 by 32 thread on it, and it's designed for quarter-inch pipe, as was the large ugly T-piece that I used. I will put the modified T-piece fitting back in my box of bits. Fitted in the chuck of my Myford ML7R lathe is a piece of brass. And as always, I'm facing across the front of it. I don't need to drill a hole down the middle because there's already one there, although it's a bit small. I will open it out very shortly with a larger drill and thread it 3 8 by 32 threads per inch. And here I'm doing just that. This drill is tapping size for 3 8 by 32 threads per inch. After drilling the tapping size hole, I simply used the 3 8 by 32 threads per inch tap and threaded the hole. Here's a different camera angle, and as you can see, I'm doing this by hand. The lathe is appearing to move, which it does because it's sat on foam pads. Why is it sat on foam pads? Well, I do have neighbours, and this lathe sits on a bench, it's not on its own stand, and it was making quite a lot of noise when it was contacting the wood of the worktop. And before anybody writes in, please don't bother, the lathe is 100% accurate, or as accurate as I need it to be. This is my micrometer, set to half an inch. The idea being I need to turn down this piece of brass to a half an inch in diameter so I can thread it to fit into the existing thread on the engine, which is half an inch by 26 threads per inch. I threaded it using one of my handheld die holders, making sure that it was threading accurately by following it all the way down with the tailstock chuck. Doing it this way makes sure that the die is always cutting square to the work. Once I parted off this very simple component, I cleaned it up on a piece of wet to dry sandpaper wrapped around my steel rule on the bench. After applying some Loctite 542 thread sealant to the large half inch by 26 thread adapter, I screwed it tightly into the exhaust outlet by first fitting this check valve that I'm going to use for the exhaust manifold so I could use a spanner on the hexagon part of it to tighten everything. I didn't use any Loctite 542 on the check valve so that was quite easy to remove, leaving the main adapter fitting in place. Here's the story so far. The thread adapter is now fitted in place. I don't want this fitting to be black, so the best way to get rid of the paint is to just soak it for a while in some cellulose thinners. This powerful solvent soon softens the paint, and here I'm removing the paint using a wire brush in my bench-mounted Proxon motor tool. After a few minutes of wire brushing, the check valve looked like this. I noticed that I have missed a ring of paint around the silver soldered area near the hexagon. I'll deal with that later. What I'm doing here is removing the ball from the check valve, because a check valve on an exhaust is not a good idea. After doing this, I put the stainless steel ball in my small plastic box with many others. If you use check valves, which are made by Chris English, Generally speaking, they have a C stamped in the top. I don't think the letter C stands for check valve. I think it's the initial of Chris. I think that's because Chris English once shared a workshop with his father Don and brother David. I think the stamped initial was to show whose parts they were. I fitted this top cap in my lathe and removed the letter C. Now I'm screwing it into position. To stop the part from being damaged, as I tightened this nut in the top of it, 
The main thread was sat in a hole in a plastic handle of an Allen key that I have. For the next part of the job, I need to fit this modified check valve into the thread adapter. It's a low pressure connection, so it doesn't need any Loctite 542. Just a copper washer to get it into the right position. This first one was a little bit on the big side, so it's not in the correct position. This is take two, and as you can see, I'm fitting a thinner copper washer, and this was dead right. All I need to do is just nip it up using my really good wide-jawed Barco spanner, with which, in the last 45 years, I have never rounded a hexagon nut. What I need now is an exhaust pipe. I silver soldered a piece of quarter-inch copper pipe to a coned union, and then fitted it as shown here. Now I think the overall appearance is far more pleasing than it was with the original massively overscale fitting. The arrangement of this steam chest and the one on the red series that I have is quite different. I think it's time to connect the airline and have a listen to the engine. It's sounding okay, but at certain speeds there's a bit of a knock. I need to investigate this. When I speed up the engine, the knock gets worse. And it was like this at the beginning before I started the renovation. I wonder what it is. Here's a clue. When I press on the end of the crankshaft, the knocking stops. Here you can clearly see that there is some end float on the crankshaft, which is not a massive problem unless it makes the engine knock. I thought it would be a good idea to fit a washer, and that's what I did. But there's still some end float, so I removed the flywheel again and added a second washer. When using shim washers for jobs like this, it's very much trial and error. You have to try different combinations to arrive at the thickness that you require. I found that two washers like this stop the end float. I carefully repositioned the flywheel and the engine ran much better. These twin cylinder single acting Stuart Sirius steam engines are very powerful for the size. And when running, cylinder lubrication is essential, but you cannot use a displacement lubricator with compressed air. They only work with steam, because it is the steam condensing into water inside the lubricator that forces the oil into the engine's main steam inlet. For compressed air running, you can use an inline lubricator, but I don't like those. Here's a very simple way of getting the oil into the cylinders if you're running on compressed air. Just remove the oil regulator valve and inject the oil at this point. For the purposes of this demonstration, I'm putting a lot of oil in here, as you'll see very shortly. After oiling the engine, replace the tap and tighten the gland nut. The engine seemed to run quite well. I don't think it's my imagination, but it did sound a little bit smoother. Then, as I turned up the air pressure, it started to do a very strange thing. It blew a massive amount of oil out of the exhaust pipe. I had used steam oil on purpose because I didn't want to fill up the room with oil vapour. This stuff's very sticky and it doesn't vaporise very easily. When using steam engines running on compressed air or steam, try not to breathe in the exhaust because it does contain oil. If you are running an engine on the bench, there's a couple of things you can do that are sensible. Make sure that the room is well ventilated. You could, of course, wear a mask, or alternatively, fasten a large cloth on the end of the exhaust pipe to catch the residue. I do this frequently. Now, when I speed up the engine, it does sound a lot better. And that is it for this short series. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. 
and by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.